So now that we have our motors installed, we're going to find our accessories bag and pull out our battery strap, and we're going to install that into the main frame to hold the battery in. So pull out the Velcro strap from your accessories bag. And we're going to insert this up through the top or the bottom of the left hand part of the frame through the slot there, making sure that the hook and loop is facing the outside. And we're going to go over the top of the frame. And then we're going to insert the strap into the top of the frame through the slot and out the bottom. Go ahead and pull this tight. Let's go ahead and locate the bag that says power distribution board. We'll pull out the board. We have one extra piece in there which is our battery buzzer which will buzz when our voltage is getting low on our battery which will tell us when to land. We'll set that aside for now. We're going to install this power distribution board onto the top of the frame. Next, locate the bag with your four speed controllers in it. We'll go ahead and pull those out. We're going to be soldering these to our power distribution board. So this will link the power for all four speed controllers, which will power our motors, all together. So on the power distribution board, we'll have four um, areas where we'll solder these power cables from the speed controllers. And each one will have a set of pads. It'll have a positive for the voltage and a negative for the ground wires. Your red wires are always your positive or your, your voltage wire. And then we have our ground wire, which is our black. So make sure when you solder these, you do it to the corresponding pads. So we'll start off by tinning the pads with the solder. You can see we've already done that here, but we're going to go ahead and go over them again and just kind of get the pads full of solder. We want to make sure that the solder doesn't leak from one pad to the other, causing a short circuit. So we'll go ahead, we'll take our ground wire here. We'll place our soldering iron over the ground wire onto the ground pad, and just with a just a couple seconds, it's going to melt right into the pad there. And you'll know when you get a good soldering joint if it's nice and shiny. You don't see a lot of wire coming through the solder joint itself. And we'll do the same thing with the positive pad here. Again, making sure that these pads do not touch each other with solder. We don't want a short circuit. And we'll do all four speed controllers. Okay, we're now going to mount the power distribution board and flight controller to the main frame. So let's go ahead and locate hardware bag three, which contains our nylon hardware. The reason why we use the nylon hardware for the electronics is that we don't short circuit anything. So we'll first locate our four nylon screws. There's eight of them in here, so go ahead and take out the ones that are a little bit longer, which are the 12 millimeter. Using a Phillips screwdriver, we'll go ahead and insert the first screw through the bottom of the frame. So we'll go ahead and put it up through the hole and up into the top. Here I'm kind of boring out the holes. If they are a little small, you can use the tip of the screwdriver to bore them out a little bit more. And we'll go ahead and screw all four screws in through the bottom of the frame.
So we have our four screws coming up through the bottom. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and locate the four holes on the power distribution board, and we're going to mount this onto the frame. But we want to make sure that the main power cable with the yellow connector comes out the back. And you can tell by the front it has the little slopes on the canopy mounts there. So orient your power distribution board just like I have mine here. Make sure that power cable is coming out the back and go ahead and press it onto the four screws. And if your screws start falling out, just go ahead and use your screwdriver to kind of screw them back in through the power distribution board. Here I'll take my screwdriver and just get those screws through a little bit better. Okay, now go ahead and locate the flight controller bag and get your bag three, your hardware bag three again. And the first thing we're going to do here is we're going to locate the hex spacers. There should be four of these. Here's maybe a different color. And we want to insert these onto the four screws over the power distribution port. So you see here, I'm just screwing them on by hand. Once we've done this, we can go ahead and use the screwdriver and tighten them down a little bit. Now we want to be very careful. We have to remember these are plastic nylon uh, hex spacers here. So if we screw too much in, we could strip them very easily. So just get them to where they're tight. You do want that power distribution board to be as flush as possible to the frame. We know we have the Velcro strap under there, so it's not going to be completely flush, but that's okay. And we'll go ahead and set our flight controller on top there. And we'll get our four other nylon screws and we'll screw those through the top of the flight controller down into those hex spacers. Now we want to make sure that the arrow on the flight controller is pointing towards the front of the aircraft. There is a little silver arrow you'll see on your flight controller. It's very, very important that this is pointing forward. So the USB should be coming out the right side of the flight controller when looking from the back of the aircraft. Screw these screws down tight. Don't go too tight as we don't want to strip them. Again, these are nylon screws and nylon hex inserts. And there is our power distribution board and our flight controller screwed down securely into our main frame. Okay, let's locate hardware bag three. And we're gonna pull out the remaining four screws in there. There should be four screws and then two small black screws. Um, the longer screws we'll be using, these are the 10 millimeter screws here. And we're gonna use these to insert the arms into the main frame and tighten them down. So go ahead and put the correct arm into the frame. And these will just slide right in. If for some reason they don't slide in and uh, there, you know, there's something blocking it, it could be the support material just wasn't removed all the way, so maybe go back and just do a little more cleanup. But they should slide in all the way to where when you look down through the hole in the top of the main frame, you'll see the brass insert through the bottom. So go ahead and pop them in, and we're going to take those four uh, 10 millimeter screws and go ahead and screw them in through the hole and down into the arm. 
The hole may be a little bit small, and that's okay. We want it to be a, a little snug so that when the screw goes down into the arm, it, it fits nice and snug and it keeps the arm tight. So this may take a little bit of time, but go ahead and screw these guys all the way in. Okay, we have our forearms in place. Now we're going to take each speed controller and plug them into the corresponding motor. It doesn't matter which bullet plugs go in which right now, as these will actually change when we change the rotation of our motor inside the software. So again, just plug these in. It does not matter which plug they go into. We're just doing this so that we know the speed controller will be talking to our motor. Let's go ahead and go into our accessories bag. Let's take some zip ties. We're just gonna clean this up. We wanna attach each speed controller to the arm so that these wires don't get caught up in the props when it's flying. We're just gonna kinda of fold the wires over the speed controller and then place a zip tie around the entire thing to keep it nice and snug against the arm. Okay, now we have a nice, clean, tidy setup with the zip tie around the wires and the speed controller holding them to the arm. We're now going to plug in our motors to the correct port on the flight controller. We have motor 1, 2, 3, and 4. We need to make sure that those wires go into the correct space on the flight controller, which is also numbered 1, 2, 3, and 4. Now when we plug these in, we need to make sure that the ground wire is facing the outside of the flight controller and that the orange wire is on the inside. The orange will be the signal wire and the ground will be the brown, so we need to make sure that these are plugged into the correct port and the correct position. This is very, very important. So we'll do motor 1. We'll do motor two, again with the ground facing the outside pin. And motor three would be the rear left arm into the motor three port there on the flight controller. And motor four, again with the ground facing the outside, we'll go in port four with the signal wire facing in towards the flight controller. Okay, now we want to locate the power wire coming from the power distribution board that will go into the flight controller. This will have a positive red and a black ground wire, and we'll plug this into port 6. And it's very important that the red wire goes into the uh, middle pin there, and the black is on the outside pin away from the flight controller. And that'll power the flight controller itself. And then we have something called our VBAT, which is our battery voltage sensor. And that will go on to these two small pins on the very outside here on the back of the flight controller. We just want to make sure that that red wire is on the far innermost pin, as you see here.
and we'll take our buzzer and again we'll put this in the port right next to that VBAT port. We want to make sure that the ground wire is on the outside and that the red wire is on the inside. Let's go ahead and take our satellite receiver and find our black wire that's coming out of the flight controller. And that'll plug right in there. It can only plug in one direction, so don't worry about messing this up. And let's go back in our accessories bag. We're just going to clean up these wires a little bit. Let's take our zip ties and we can just kind of bunch the wires up and put a zip tie around them so that we can keep it nice and snug down to the kind of towards the flight controller there. Next step, we're going to take our battery and we're going to get this thing charging so that we can go ahead and go with the, uh, the programming. So we'll take our radio and get some batteries in that. It takes four double A's. We'll need our USB cable. That'll link us to the computer to clean flight, which is the firmware and uh, software that we're going to be running. So let's locate our charger. We'll plug it into the main power cord there. When we plug it in, we'll notice that the three lights on the front of the charger turn green. So let's locate the battery and the white connector on the battery, which is our balance plug. And it's only going to go into the left one here. Go ahead and plug it in, you'll notice that the three lights turn red. Once those three lights are green, we'll know that our battery is completely charged. Make sure to charge your battery in a nice open area without any kind of flammable materials nearby. When it's done, you'll go ahead and pull out the battery. Make sure you pull it by the connector and not the cord so you don't pull the cords out of the connector. And your battery is now fully charged. So to mount the battery, we're going to place it with the power cord facing the back of the aircraft. And it'll just press right into this cavity here. Then we'll place our battery tray protector there on the bottom of the battery. The words Talon should be towards the front of the aircraft. Go ahead and wrap your Velcro strap through the little loop there. Pull it tight and Velcro the battery and tray down to the aircraft. We're now ready to go ahead and hook this up to clean flight and get all the parameters adjusted.